So the goal of this video is to show you the actionable steps that you could use to find and trade earnings winners as well as separate fact from fluff. As always, all I ask for in return for this video is that you hit that beautiful like button and also if you see value, subscribe for more short, sweet, and simplified videos on how to trade the stock market. So in order to trade earnings plays, you're going to first need to be able to find them. There's many ways to do this, but the first way that I do it is by going to finviz.com, hitting screener, going to all filters, and then specifying the earnings date or time period that I want. This is a great feature because you could find what works for you. Most of my trading happens in the morning, so I like to find stocks that have their earnings calls pre-market. Of course, earnings will be more common in March, June, September, and December since this is the end of the quarter and these are when more companies report their earnings. Also, you could set it so that the RSI shows stocks that are oversold, but sometimes that will be a little bit too harsh of a criteria, so you know, use sparingly. So now we have a list of 389 earnings plays that will be taking place in the next five days. To narrow it down further, let's cut it by stocks that have had insider transactions of over 5%. Of course, like with that being said, the correlation between positive earnings and insider trading may not always be that strong. Of course, we know of a few situations where it was quite strong, but since we are screening, it's still helpful to play around with different criteria to give us the results that we want. Um, another thing I like to set from time to time is the target price. The target price is the price at which analysts are projecting the stock to be at in the future. And you could specify to filter for stocks at, above, or below the target price. You can also choose the sector. Some people swear by certain sectors, so if you're only interested in one sector, this is a good opportunity to scan using that. For me, I choose any sector that provides the volatility, so I'm not going to limit this by sector. Anyways, I encourage you to set and play around with a bunch of different criteria while screening for your earnings plays. There's a lot of different functions and combinations. So, so if you go through the list, you can click a bunch of them and see some of the news and usually see where the monkeys are ranking them. When screening, we are sort of looking for a rough draft of stocks to add to our watch list. So I'd go through these stocks very quickly and look for stocks that have high, high price targets compared to current price as well as lots of upgrades which are highlighted in green. Of course, you also want stocks that have a lot of recent upgrades. If it got upgraded 10 years ago, I don't see how that's really that relevant. Generally speaking though, you're going to have more luck looking through recent news than in this analyst highlight section, but sometimes you'll have a mixture. While going through recent news, I'm also looking for the stocks that have positive news articles being featured on the top five lists. Point me to the right direction in terms of a good earnings winner. Again though, just because the news is positive doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be likely to have positive earnings or even a positive price reaction to positive earnings, but this is just the first step and we're screening so it's sort of like the rough draft. Once you've gone through and compiled a list of maybe 10 to 20 stocks that could be potential plays, it's time to dig a bit deeper. The main three things to focus on are one, what was the estimate from the monkey slash analysts? Two, what was the guidance that the company provided? And three, are the investors anticipating a hit or miss? And this is reflected in the stock's share price in terms of the gapping up, in terms of the buildup or the breakdown before the announcement date. You can compile this data by looking at the news articles and sentiment provided on Finviz, but another route you can take is to dig a bit deeper. Earnings Whisper allows you to type in a stock and for the most part, you'll find analyst predictions on earnings and revenue. I find this super helpful for evaluating different stocks that I'm researching. In terms of investors anticipating a hit or a miss, You'll also see that reflected in the share price leading up to the earnings and you can see some useful information. Another way to get an idea of the newest earnings plays is by going to a Facebook group such as our Zip Trader Circle. We always get people posting and raving about the latest earnings stocks. I think it's a really good resource. I honestly, you know, a lot of times I don't even know something's happening and someone posts about it and then I'll look and I'll be like, oh look, wow, this is something that I could trade. Um, so that's a great opportunity to find at least some stocks to put on your watch list as well as some questions if you're having trouble. And it's completely free, of course. I always put the link in the description. But anyways, once you've identified earnings plays, you're going to need to find confirmation. Confirmation that the stock will react in the way that you think it will. So let's go ahead and use Tesla as an example. So Tesla was widely expected to report poor earnings at this point in time, and their guidance was quite poor. However, if you had noted the earnings date from Finviz or NASDAQ's earnings calendar, you would have had this on your watch list without even predicting the earnings results. So you can't consistently predict positive or negative earnings, 
But once the earnings call for Tesla's made, we started seeing signs of an uptrend. And the confirmation of the uptrend was this break above the SMA line. This break above the SMA line is the confirmation that we look for. And this confirms that the earnings call or positive earnings results are resulting in an uptrend. The point in time to buy is when you see that cross above the SMA line. We then saw this gap of real estate between the SMA line and the price action for several days, which indicates price strength. But the plan here is always to hold until you see signs of price weakness. This price weakness is reflected in the price action dipping back and then eventually crossing below the SMA line. So this is what I call the confirmation of a reversal. It works both ways. If it breaks above the SMA line, that's an upward reversal. If it breaks down, that's a downward reversal. Both are super important for you to note when trading any sort of stock, but very important in terms of the earnings winners as well. Simultaneously, you could make the argument that holding the position would have made me more money, but that's in hindsight, and at the time of trading, there weren't any indications showing a price recovery and subsequent uptrend, so, so I like to sell out when it breaks down below that SMA line. So to reiterate, the focus should be on buying stocks that broke the SMA line and are building real estate between the line and the price action. This real estate is that gap between the line and the price action Action and it signifies a sort of price strength because it's trading very high. That means that it's showing early warning signs of weakness and then once it breaks below it, that's a break of trend. The key here is that we don't just predict earnings before or even assume that positive earnings mean share appreciation, but rather we wait for a confirmation. For example, the next earnings report of Tesla may have beat some analysts expectations, but it didn't increase as much as the previous one. But buying when the price had broken the SMA line and selling when it had broke back down past it would have not only protected our capital, but also left us with a bit of profits. Anyways, earnings could be quite a huge spectacle. In fact, they are sort of the mother of overhyping. As traders, we focus on buying into the emotional reactions of the masses, and thus these reports provide a great opportunity for us. However, as with all news, sometimes positive earnings or negative earnings won't impact the stock price. Other times it might even have the opposite effect that we might anticipate. There's many factors at play here, but the point is that the market does not act rational. It does not act rational in the short term. The short term fluctuations of the market represent the indecisiveness and different interpretations of individual investors and institutions on a broader scale. It's in the long run that you start seeing actual value reflected in a share's price, and that's where long-term investing comes in. So keep in mind that we're focusing on the short term. We are going to need to see confirmations every single time that we are going to declare a stock and earnings winner. Once the price dip breaks below the SMA line, that's a sign of price weakness, and it's time to take profits. Anyways, if you need help finding and confirming reversals, I'll put some more links to videos that I've done on those topics in the description below. If you have any more questions, comment below, or join our free Facebook group, Zip Trader Circle. Have a great day, folks, and I'll see you in the next video.